In this problem, we have an elastic collision where a very heavy ball collides with a small ball. The small ball. The small ball is initially stationary. The larger one is initially moving, so let's draw a picture. Here's ball one moving with speed two meters per second. The initial one two meters per second. Collides with ball two that's initially stationary. The initial two equals zero. What is the speed of each ball after the collision? So this is an elastic collision, um, so we'll use conservation of momentum and conservation of kinetic energy because both things are conserved in, a, in an elastic collision. Let's write the statement for conservation of momentum first. Momentum final equals momentum initial. Momentum final is the final momentum of both things, one and two together, equals the initial momentum of both things together. We know that momentum is mass times velocity. We know that ball two is initially stationary, so the initial momentum is zero. Uh, we see here that we have two unknowns, VF1 and VF2, so we're going to need to use a second equation. Let's solve this equation for VF1 in terms of VF2, and then we'll do a substitution after we write down the kinetic energy equation. So VF1 is equal to M1, V initial 1, minus M2, V final 2. Divide the whole thing by mass 1. Then our M1 goes in here, and M1 goes in here. V initial 1 minus M2 over M1 times V final 2. We can put in the numbers we know. V initial 1 is 2 meters per second. M2 over M1. M2 is 1 pound. M1 is 16 pounds. So M2 over M1 is 1 over 16, or 0 0.0625 VF2. Okay, so there's an expression for VF1. Now let's write down our equation for conservation of kinetic energy because it's an elastic collision. So K final one e K final equals K initial. K final one plus K final two equals K initial one plus K initial two. One half M one V final one squared plus one half M two V final two squared equals one half M one V initial one squared plus one half M two V initial two squared. Right off the bat, this term is zero because the second ball is initially stationary. Divide both sides by one half and our one halves cancel. And now let's see where we can go. Here we have V final one. We know that this expression is V final one, so we'll substitute this expression right here, and then we'll see if we can find those final speeds. So M1 outside of two minus 0 0.0625 V final two squared, plus M2 V final two squared equals M1 V initial one squared. Okay, let's multiply out this term doing the FOIL method. So M1, 2 times 2 gives us 4, minus 0 0.0625 VF squared gives us plus 3.906 times 10 to the minus 3 VF2 squared. Then we have 2 of this term, so we get minus 0 0.25 vf2 plus m2 vf2 squared equals m1 v1 squared. We can put in m1 is 7.27 kilograms, v1 is 2 meters per second, and we get 29.08 here. Okay, let's multiply our m1 in through all of these terms right here. So we get 29.08 plus 0 0.0284 VF2 squared minus 1.818 VF2 plus M2 times VF2 squared, M2 is 0 0.45 equals 29.08. 
So we have 29.08 on either side. They can subtract off. And now we have 0 0.4784 VF2 squared minus 1.818 VF2 equals 0. Yeah, that's everything there. So now we can solve for VF2. That's going to give us 3.8 meters per second. And VF1 is 2 minus 0 0.0625 VF2. That's going to give us 1.8 meters per second. So if we look at our answers and we see what happens and we ask if there's anything interesting there. Um, ball one is really light, so after it's hit, it starts to move. It starts to move and it takes off. We'll see that the speed is about twice as big as the original speed as ball one, so that's interesting. So VF2 is about twice the original speed of V initial one. And the other thing that happens, V final one is 1.8. The initial one is two meters per second. V final one didn't change very much at all. So V final one is about equal to V initial one. If you wanted to, you could do this problem with just symbols um, and then look at the relationships. What do we get for exact values as M1 gets much, much bigger than M2? That might be an interesting problem to work on too.